In this video, we're going to talk about rotor parameters. As you can see, I have eight of them listed here with some symbols. I have my go-to diagram of a three-phase motor, and then I have a formula for reactants, which we'll talk about later. Before I get into the thick of things here, I want to review a couple terms like synchronous speed, which is the speed of the magnetic field of the stator, and that's measured in RPM, and also rotor speed, which is measured in RPM, and that's just how fast the rotor is turning, and then slip speed, which is the difference between synchronous speed and rotor speed. And another way of thinking of slip speed is how much the rotor is not spinning. <clears throat> then there's also slip, which is the ratio of slip speed to synchronous speed. And slip and slip speed are related and they are directly proportional to each other and sometimes through this video I might interchange the two terms. Depending on the effect, I do know that uh, some of these formulas, which I'm not going to be concentrating on the formulas if I don't have to in this video, I just want to focus on the concepts. Um, but knowing that there are some formulas behind these terms, I might use the word slip because I know it relates directly to the formula. So let's start with resistance. So we're focusing on, again, rotor parameters, so we're focusing on the rotor here. So let's look at the resistance of the rotor. What creates it? Well, it's basically how it's made. It's the conductor, it's the material of the conductor. So we could have aluminum bars, we could have a copper windings, for example. Now, is the material going to change with the speed of that rotor? And the answer is no. If I got copper winders here and I just spin it faster, I still have copper windings. Therefore, the resistance of the rotor is going to remain constant because the material remains constant. Now let's uh, move on to frequency. This is a different story. The easiest way to explain this is let's think of our motor as a transformer where the stator is the primary winding and the rotor is the secondary winding. Now at blocked rotor condition, which means that the rotor is not turning at all, it's just stopped. Let's see what happens. So we have our synchronous speed, so a magnetic field spinning around the motor and then we have the rotor which is stopped. Now we have relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field, so that's going to induce a voltage and a frequency into this rotor. Now when it's stopped, this rotor is going to take on the full electrical frequency as a stator, just as a transformer would. But as the rotor spins, and let's go to the other extreme, let's say the rotor was spinning exactly synchronous speed. And I'll use my fingers to kind of visualize that. So if the rotor and the stator were spinning at exactly the same speed, you know how many lines of flux would be cut? Zero. And if there's no lines of flux being cut or no relative motion between this conductor and this magnetic field, we're going to have no induced voltage and no induced frequency. So what we have here, if this is stopped, high frequency, as this spins, the frequency gets lower. So now we can say frequency is you know, inversely proportional to the speed of the rotor. And that's a true statement. So you know, as the rotor speeds up, the frequency in induced into the rotor goes down. But another way of looking at that is what it's proportional to. So this little fish sign is a proportional sign. And that's where we bring in the term slip. So <clears throat> the more the motor's not spinning, or let's look at as the motor is blocked rotor condition, it's going to take on the full frequency. So does it make sense then the frequency will be proportional to the actual slip of the motor or slip speed of the motor. So as the slip speed or the slip is at its highest, the frequency will also be at its highest. As there's no slip in the motor, then the frequency will be at its lowest or in that case zero. Moving on to voltage, it's going to be the same physical properties here for the same reason. So the rotor stopped and we got the stator doing its thing, it's going to induce the highest voltage at block rotor condition. As the rotor is spinning, the voltage, induced voltage will go down. So another way of saying that is the voltage induced to the rotor will be proportional to slip also. And again, another way of saying that, as the rotor speeds up, the induced voltage will go down. So you can use both of those 
ways to think of this. All right, reactants, here's where we had this formula. Now we have 2 pi f l. Now the 2 pi, those are constants. Now l, that would take a whole other video to talk about the details of inductance. Right now this is just a physical property, which means we're not physically changing anything in the rotor, which also means that this is a constant. So the only thing we have left is frequency. Well, we already just talked about that. Frequency is proportional to slip. Well, if frequency is proportional to slip, we can see here that frequency is also proportional to reactance, or the other way around. Put those all together, that would mean reactance would be proportional to slip also. So all three of these are directly proportional to slip. And what I mean by that is, if uh, the slip is doubled, then each one of these parameters will be doubled too. Okay, let's move on. Impedance. So the symbol for impedance is Z. By the way, these little R's stand for just ro rotor, so we're focusing on the rotor parameters here. Now, the best way to explain this is I'm going to have to use a formula. So here's our formula for impedance. We got um, resistance plus reactance, and then squared, and then the square root. Well, we just established that resistance stays constant, and we also said reactance goes up with slip, or is directly proportional to slip in this case. <clears throat> well, if we look at this, we go, well, resistance is going to stay the same. Reactance will go up, which will make impedance go up. The only difference is it won't be directly proportional. In other words, if reactance is doubled, the impedance will not double. It will still go up a bit, but it won't be directly proportional. So what we can do here is we can just say as slip goes up, then impedance goes up. So not directly proportional, but they increase you know, with, with each other. Okay, power factor of the rotor. What's the formula for that? That's R over Z, or in this case, R of the rotor over impedance of the rotor. Same kind of idea here. Resistance stays constant. That doesn't change. The impedance, what did we just say? It goes up with slip. So if this goes up, what happens to the power factor? This is going to go down. So there's a few ways we can say that. So as slip goes up, then power factor goes down, and they're not you know, directly proportional or directly in, indirectly proportional. So what we can say here, basically, as the rotor speed goes up, and I'm going to use this symbol, so N for speed, R for rotor. As the rotor speed goes up, what happens to the power factor? It's going to go up. So let you chew on that, why those concepts are the way they are. Moving on. Current. Well, current, we're just going to use Ohm's law here, so that's... Voltage over impedance. Now this one's kind of funky, because if we look at this, the voltage is directly proportional to the slip. So in other words, the slip goes up, voltage goes up in the same proportion. Now impedance, it's not directly proportional, but it still goes up too. <clears throat> so these both go up, but they don't go up the same rate, because if they did, then the current would stay the same no matter the speed. What ends up happening here is as slip goes up, the rotor current goes up. And it would take some graphs and some detail to really explain that. So right now, I'm just going to use that and say there's no direct proportion here, but slip goes up, rotor current goes up. And that would make sense, hopefully, if you just think about a motor in just a practical sense. If you're throwing some load on there, the motor's going to slow down, which means the slip goes up, the load goes up, the counter torque goes up. Those are some other concepts that we talked about in the past. What do you think would happen to the current if it's pushing more rocks along? Yeah, the current is going to go up. Okay, and then the last one I have active current. So some other names for active current are resistive current, in phase current, and horizontal current. So we can do a formula here, but really the main characteristic I want to focus here is active current is almost directly proportional to torque. And that's the main thing that we want to focus on for this course. Active current is really what's directly proportional to torque. Not the total 
rotor current, but the in phase or horizontal current proportional to torque. We'll see you guys next video.